Welcome to the Pocket Paramedic Podcast, where we're here to help student paramedics transition from university lectures to ambulance placements. In this podcast, I'm going to share four of my top tips to help you get signed off on placement. When I was on first placement, I felt like a rabbit in the headlights. I ended up with about three different mentors, I think, and that was just in the first two weeks. And I spent most of my time just trying to figure out how to do observations without looking stupid. I knew I needed to get my pad signed off. Uh, Back then we had paper-based pads with all our companies in there that we needed signing off for first year. But I didn't really know what exactly I needed signing off within that pad on my first placement. And I was too nervous to even get the pad out of my bag anyway, just in case my mentor laughed at me or felt that or I wasn't doing it at the right stage, maybe I wasn't quite at the stage where I needed things signing off yet, I just wasn't sure, so I just left it in my bag. But over the course of my first year, I found ways that made it a lot easier to get signed off. And there was, and there's more to it than just doing your particular skill that you need signing off and hoping that your mentor notices that you've done that skill and even knows that it's something you need signing off in your path. You might not even know. So I've put together four tips that help me to stay ahead of the game on placement uh, that you can use in your practice and hopefully it'll help you pass your practice element of the course with no dramas attached. So tip one is to use post-it notes. Now I know some of you, probably all of you now, are using paper-based practice pads and you're probably all on PebblePad or a similar online platform that houses all of your signing off um, details, all of your signing off things that you need to do. Um, so instead of using post-it notes, you can just pop it in the notes in your phone, then you've got a record, record of it and you can cut and paste it into that um, online platform whenever it suits. Um, so because I was paper-based, I used to carry post-it notes with me on shift Every time I completed a skill that I knew that I knew that was one of my competencies that needed signing off, I would write it down on the post-it note and then stick it in the appropriate place in my practice pad. And I'd write it out like my mentor would. So for example, I'd write, uh, Liam completed a respiratory assessment on an 84-year-old patient complaining of breathing difficulties. He independently located the correct placement for auscultation, but required support when identifying added respiratory sounds. If you're going to do it this way, it's important to be honest. So if you were to write, if I was to write, Liam was amazing at respiratory assessments, he needed absolutely no help whatsoever, and he's probably going to be a consultant paramedic within five years after finishing uni, then it's it's probably not going to work. So it's really important to be honest when you're doing this style of Um, signing your pad off. Um, So once you've got four or five post-it notes that are all wrote out and ready to go and you've stuck them in the appropriate place or you've got them in your notes section of your phone and they're ready to upload, then try and find a good time to approach your mentor. It usually helps if you bring them a cup of tea or a cup of coffee um, and then you can go through the post-it notes together. Now, if your mentor agrees with the comments that you've that you've written down, they can just copy your notes straight into the pad or cut and paste it straight into that section online. Um, and if they don't agree, they can tweak them slightly, have a discussion about it with you and write in their variation. Either way, this makes life a lot easier for you and your mentor and it can help build that relationship with them. Uh, it can also force conversation about how you're doing, if you're at the appropriate stage within your training, and um, what you need to improve on. So it really helps to um, strengthen your relationship with your mentor as well. What I will say is though, just make sure you okay this with your mentor. Some people might not like the fact that you're writing out what they should write and um, put in your pad. So just make sure you have that conversation first to say, look, will it be easy if I do it this way? Um, for me, it definitely wasn't. For students I, I take on, I do it that way with them. And because you're going through it together before it actually goes online, then I can't see a problem with it at all. It's absolutely fine. The next tip is know your skills. As mentors, we often have lots of different students coming out with us at the same time. You might be with us for a four week period, then another student from a different university might be with us for a period. And we also have in-house students coming out with us as well as NQPs and new ECA starters. On top of the educating side of the job, 
We're also living in a time where the ambulance service is under extreme pressure, which means the staff, aka your mentor, is also under a lot of pressure. They might not always have the time they'd like to have to go through exactly whereabouts you are on the course and exactly what you need signing off on this placement block. To add to the difficulty, unfortunately, every university does things a little differently and their sign-off documents can vary. For example, when I was a student, we weren't allowed to cannulate until our very last placement, whereas a friend of mine at a different university was cannulating from their first placement. So it's down to you. You need to know exactly what you need to sign off on any particular placement block. Make sure you look through your pad, pebble pad, or however you access your sign off documents and familiarize yourself with what you need signing off on placements one, two, and three of that year. Then share this information with your mentor. The next tip I've titled plan ahead. So when there's three of you on an ambulance, things can sometimes get a little confusing. If you don't communicate, you all end up walking into a job without any direction. You're not sure who's doing the talking, who's doing the observations, who's writing the PRF. And if you're not too careful, you'll end up missing out on some sign-off opportunities. Instead, try planning ahead on the way to the job. So this ties in with the previous tip because to do this, you need to know what you need signed off. Let's say, for example, you need history taking signing off. On the way to a suitable job, ask your mentor if it's okay to take the lead and take this patient's history. You can explain it's something you need signing off and now's a good time to do it. Likewise, if you need ECG placement signing off, you can do the same. If you head into a chest pain, there's a pretty high chance you're going to be doing an ECG. So let your crewmates know that it's something you need signing off and ask if it's okay for you to do the ECG if the patient requires one. This can work for anything cannulation, assessments, cardiac arrest skills, handovers, whatever you need signing off. Remember, you don't always see everything on placement, so if you get a job that includes one of your competencies, plan ahead so you don't miss out on the opportunity. So the fourth and final tip is to time it right. Timing's everything when it comes to signing off your pad. If you're late off, your mentor's hungry, tired, or they're just having a bad day, then you can find it challenging. The good news is as long as you've been implementing the first three tips, it shouldn't really matter about this. You should already know what you need signing off. You'd have already taken advantage of any sign off opportunity and you'd have already written out some sample sign off text that's ready for approval. So even though their pen hasn't graced your sign off form, it doesn't matter. You're ready whenever it's convenient for them. If you're extremely lucky and this doesn't happen often, you may get some downtime on standby. This has to be the best time to get signed off. There's no jobs to do and most of the time you're just talking nonsense and passing the time with some coffee. If you find yourself in this situation then get your pad signed off is the best time to do it. But if like most of us that comment just made you laugh because there isn't a chance in hell you're getting any downtime when you're out on shift and you probably won't even get a meal break then there are some other ideas I have for you that might help. So after certain jobs, you might find yourself with the odd five or 10 minutes to have a student debrief. This could happen um, if you've just left a patient at home and you're still completing paperwork, or if you've just handed over a hospital and you have a few minutes to spare. Um, It's also worth noting that some ambulance services might allow for some debrief times after jobs. So it doesn't always happen, but if you give them a radio and say, look, we've just had a really interesting job. Is there any chance we can stand down while I do a student debrief? Sometimes that um, that works, but not all the time. And double check with your mentor before you request that, that that's something available to you. So when you are in these ideal sign off situations, politely ask your mentor if now's a good time to get a few of your competencies signed off. Now, the best thing about this is you can now present your pre-written notes for approval. And your mentor will have very little heavy lifting to do, making the whole process a lot easier for them. A bag of sweets and a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit, also probably won't hurt this situation at all. So in summary, the four tips I recommend doing to help you get signed off on placement are tip number one, use post-it notes. If you're not on paper pads, then just pop the notes in your phone and upload them when required. Tip two, know your skills. Know what you need signing off in placement one, two and three of that particular year. Tip three, plan ahead. 
on your way to jobs, tell your mentor what you need signing off and what you're going to do about it at this job to be able to sign it off at the end. And tip four, time it right. Try just after uh, jobs if you've left them at home and you're still doing paperwork and also time in between from handover to clearing. You might get a couple of minutes there and see if you've got any student debrief time that's allowable by your trust. I hope this has been helpful. Um, Take it easy and I'll speak to you soon. If you've enjoyed this podcast, perhaps you'll also enjoy some of the resources that I offer. Um, I have a history taken and diagnosis pocketbook, which gives you all the questions you need to ask any presenting complaint so you can take the lead on placement without any help from your mentor. I'll leave the link in the show notes for that. I've also got a free ECG download which shows you how to spot a normal 12 lead ECG. We're just getting started there. And there's an ECG pocketbook which is coming out very soon. Um, thanks guys, speak soon.